Good morning and welcome to the groundbreaking ceremony for King Industries. Can everybody hear me? Just to set the tone here, there were a large amount of people that helped King Industries get to the point of this groundbreaking ceremony. I wanted to specifically welcome and recognize U.S. Senator Blumenthal, Ken Curran, Director of Outreach for U.S. Senator Chris Murphy. Uh, I know that Chris Murphy played a large role uh, in getting this WIC site cleaned up, and, and we really appreciate that. It's, it's a great thing for Waterbury. Uh, Commissioner Robert Klee, Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Tim Sullivan, Deputy Commissioner of the State Department of Economic and Community Development. And of course, the Honorable Mayor Neil O'Leary. While we're on the topic of Mayor O'Leary, I wanted to specifically thank him for his overwhelming enthusiasm in getting to know King Industries as a company and recognizing that we would be a great fit for Waterbury. Your, your leadership has been just outstanding for us. Thank you. I also wanted to welcome and recognize Senator John Hartley, excuse me, Joan Hartley, Senator State Representative Anthony D'Amelio, State Representative Larry Butler, State Representative Jeffrey Berger, State Representative Salim Nujim. I also wanted to recognize and thank the Board of Aldermen that are present here today for the City of Waterbury. Thank you for taking the time to come down and visit King Industries, and thank you for your service to the City of Waterbury. We're almost done. I also wanted to thank my fellow King Industries co-workers the second site design team, local community leaders, and friends. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank the King Industries setup team, Charlie, Kelly, Bernice, Rick, Ray, Dan Farina. Did I miss anybody? No. Joe, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for making this event a success. It really looks great. King Industries is a specialty chemical additive manufacturer. The chemistry King Industries creates is all around us. It is in the paint in your homes, in your offices, in the cars we all drive. It is in the hydraulic oil that enables planes to land safely. It is in the rubber hoses used to water your gardens, as well as the tires in your cars and trucks that you use every day. It is in the internal microprocessors, in the smartphones, and tablets and LCD screens that you commonly use throughout the days, weeks, months as you pursue your careers. That only scratches the surface of the products that King Industries makes. And although King Industries products are only used at a fraction of a percent, I just mentioned, they are necessary and essential to many areas of technology to help them advance, grow the economy, and provide good jobs. As you get to know King Industries, you will find that safety is a major part of our business, simply because it keeps us in business. King Industries adheres to and is certified to the international standards organizations known as ISO for 9001 quality, 14001 environmental, and 18001 safety. And we've had those qualifications for almost decades now. All of these standards are audited externally by Lloyd's Registry Quality Assurance out of Texas. The products we manufacture are not easy to make. There's a large amount of research and development that goes into them, and it could take up to three to five years before a customer is willing to make a large order. Our manufacturing process requires a significant capital investment and requires a large amount of training in order to become familiar with our manufacturing process. Our products are not only set, sold around the world, they are sold, they are sold in our sales offices in Holland, our laboratories in Germany, and technical laboratories in China. I give all the credit in the world to the sales and marketing team who are incredibly talented and technically proficient, but also spend months out of the year on the road visiting with customers away from their families. For the past 83 years, King Industries has been able to do this because of the hard work, determination,
competence and character of the people that work at King Industries. We come from all different ethnicities, educational backgrounds, experience backgrounds, from forklift operators, chemists, carpenters, environmental engineers, pipe fitters, manufacturing op operators, safety technicians, electricians, PhD chemists, and administrative assistants. It's a di dynamic mix of people, but it's the face of manufacturing in America. Many companies choose to outsource manufacturing outside of America. They want to improve and streamline their operations because they're getting beat up on cost, quality, and delivery to their customers. However, this type of thinking could ultimately lead companies down a bad road. Eventually, manufacturing competencies erode, which most likely will lead to companies cutting costs and jobs based upon financial reasons rather than the competitive business landscape. Many people have asked my father and I in King Industries, why do you choose to expand your business in Waterbury? Why Connecticut? The answer has about four parts. The first, it's a family company. We employ husbands, fathers, wives, aunts, uncles, grandfathers, Charlie, uh, sons, daughters. 99% of our people live in Connecticut. My father has worked with these people over the past 40 years, and essentially, they're part of our family. Second, we like to keep our technology closely held. It helps keep us competitive. With working with great people, such as I described before, you start to develop trust, and that's important for us. One of the last and, and more important reasons uh, staying in Connecticut is it's, it's easy, easy for us to, it'll be easy for us to come up here in 45 minutes and get to oversee our manufacturing operations, and that's a big component of it. And probably the last and most important reason why we came here, my, my father doesn't fly. <laughs> good for Connecticut, good for Waterbury, bad for the airlines. <laughs> Over the past three years, uh, with the help of the mayor's staff, Andrew Martelli, Kevin Del Globo, Joe, Joe McGraw, Jennifer Rose, we've gotten to know Waterbury, its history and its people. And as far as I'm concerned, the land behind me is sacred ground. The Chase Brass and Copper Factory was a cornerstone of American manufacturing, supplying the majority of artillery shells for World War I and World War II. At one time, it employed 6,000 people, and from what I'm told, even had a section of its office building as its hospital. Although the factory closed down in the early 70s, it left in its wake a workforce that was skilled in precision metalworking technology. I'm sure many former employees of the Chase Brass and Copper Company started their own small metal working businesses that are still alive in Waterbury today. The site behind me will be our second manufacturing site. It will be built in three phases. The first phase will be built from 2015 to 2018. It will be three buildings consisting of a utility building, a warehouse building, and a manufacturing building totaling approximately 40, 43,000 square feet, employing 20 uh, having about 20 new jobs for the city of Waterbury and an investment of about $20 million. The second phase of our development will be from 2019 to 2021. It will consist of two manufacturing buildings, both at approximately 18,000 square feet and also an additional 20 jobs. Phase three, will happen from 2022 to 2025. It will consist of one manufacturing building at approximately 18,000 square feet and approximately 20 jobs. And again, another significant investment for King Industries as well as in the city of Waterbury. To summarize, I think Waterbury was the perfect match for King Industries. There's a skilled workforce here supported by new technical trade schools and a great legacy of manufacturing, and a mayor and city staff that is determined and committed to turning empty brownfields properties into areas that are useful for the greater community, great for businesses, and new jobs for the city of Waterbury. And with that, I would like to 
invite the Honorable Mayor, Lear, Lear, Mayor Neil O'Leary to say a few words. Thank you, bud. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How long do you think we can hold on to this weather? I'll tell you, every day that goes by, I keep thinking to myself, we're going to pay for it in January and February. <laughs> so enjoy it while it's here. You know, today is a very, very exciting day, and I, uh, I had this great speech that Bob just read to you. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm really grateful that you did, because now I get to do what I think I do best, and it's really just speak from the heart. Um, and thank you for acknowledging all the wonderful, important uh, people that are here. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge all the people from Waterville that are here, all the business owners, all the residents. And um, not that many years ago, uh, this section of the city uh, was um, pretty well blighted out and forgotten about and uh, kind of in a sad place. Uh, then Congressman Murphy is... Uh, Bob pointed out was able to uh, do something uh, that few have been able to do since, and that was to secure a $15 million environmental remediation grant through the Department of Defense. That is what kicked off this project, this WIC project, which was 600,000 square feet of building on 30 acres of land. Uh, the city back then, the administration back then, thought that they would be wise to um, to save the 400,000 square feet uh, and, and demolish the remaining 200,000, which is where we are today on the south side. Um, it was uh, an opportunity for Levada to come in, which we're very, very uh, thrilled to have uh, Jim Lajewski and his staff here today. Uh, Levada is one of our strongest manufacturers in the city and, and one of our larger employers and expanding as we speak. And we're very, very proud that we were able to lock them into a long-term lease during the first uh, year of our administration. So that was a great coup for us here, as well as the other uh, manufacturing uh, facilities that are on this site as well. Everyone now is in long-term lease, which is very good for the city. But this site in particular um, was slated to be a public works facility, many of you will remember. And we had a problem with that from the get-go because we really didn't understand the, the logic behind it for two reasons. One, it wouldn't create a job. And two, it wouldn't create any grand list growth, nor would it create any tax revenue for the city of Waterbury, which we all desperately understand how badly is needed. So we decided that we would, uh, we would turn this over to a, uh, a, a shovel-ready manufacturing site, and it wasn't very long after King Industries came knocking on our door. Our first trip down to Norwalk to see uh, the, to meet the King family uh, was uh, was incredible. I, I remember almost every moment of it as I stand here today in front of you. We were met by Mrs. King, who made us all sandwiches, and we walked the facility and we talked to all the employees there, and um, each and every one of them was really proud to work for King Industries. And I've been to a lot of manufacturing facilities since being mayor and even before on the campaign trail. And you can tell when you talk to someone in a company, in a manufacturing facility, by their enthusiasm, how excited they are to be where they are. And at King Industries, every single employee was proud to be a member of King Industries. And, and that always stuck with me. The other thing that stuck with me is they were all long-term employees. You know, 18 years, 20 years, 25 years, 28 years. And as Bob pointed out, Many of them, brothers and sisters and cousins and related to each other. And when we got in the car on the way home, I remember saying to Joe Gary, this is an incredible place. I hope and pray we can convince them to come into Waterbury. A lot of work has been done. Um, then uh, Commissioner of Deep, uh, Dan Esty, got involved. Uh, Attorney Gary O'Connor uh, got very deeply involved as he had been working on the Brownfield Remediation Project here from the beginning. <laughs> Many other folks got involved as well, as Bob pointed out, people from our office. And it was just a great opportunity uh, for all of us to meet a family, a four-generation company to get into the city of Waterbury. And really, if you study manufacturing in Waterbury and the people that are here, it is generational, generation after generation. Many people who own companies here were owned by their great-grandparents or grandparents or their fathers. And this is just a perfect example of what belongs here, in my opinion, in the city of Waterbury, continuing that, that uh, family tradition and trend. Obviously, we were happy to have King come here for the growth of the Grand List and the op obvious opportunities for increased tax revenue. 
and jobs. But one of the things that Mr. King, Mr. Richard King, said to me on our first and subsequent visits is that he would like to partner up with our education department. And that meant a lot to me. It meant a lot to me because when a manufacturer wants to come into the city of Waterbury and then go right into our school department and, and become a collaborative partner in our education department, that is a huge thing to me because understanding that we've been working on this with the building of our career academy and tying in all these different opportunities I was delighted to hear Mr. King say that and start an internship and apprenticeship programs here. So it was just an amazing win-win for all of us. So I'm not going to go on that much longer because there's some great folks here who have a lot to say. But I guess at the end of the day, what I want to say is thank you. Thank you to the King family. Thank you to all of you who are here. You know, this is very exciting time for Waterbury. Um, you know, we have had such great cooperation from Governor Malloy. Uh, he has been an incredible partner in the city since we've taken office. Uh, there's so many things to talk about uh, in downtown and the Tiger Grant, but really one of the most significant partnerships that we've developed with the governor's office is through Commissioner uh, Smith and uh, Deputy Commissioner Tim Sullivan who are here and Commissioner Clee who is here. And it's all about brownfield remediation. This city has over 100 brownfields. And if we don't take the aggressive approach and progressive approach in identifying these brownfields, acquiring these brownfields, and cleaning these brownfields, and then doing exactly what we're doing today, welcoming new manufacturing uh, opportunities into this city, then we are in trouble as a city. We have to do this to grow and to stabilize our tax rate and to make Waterbury a place where people really do want to come and live, work, and play. And this is the best example of that. And I'm very proud that we've been able to do this in three years. It's an amazing feat, an amazing time frame, and all these great people here are responsible for it. So thank you, Bob. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you, Mayor. At, at this time, I'd like to uh, invite up Senator Richard, U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal to say a few words. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Uh, and thank you, Shenton. Uh, where is Shenton? Robert's twin brother. Uh, you guys seem to get along okay. That's good. Uh, I want to thank the, the King family, and uh, I want to thank the mayor because he has really been a state and even a national leader in so many areas, uh, one of them being our educational system. When he was a leader in law enforcement, in police, uh, now that he's mayor, he has devoted so much of himself to bringing along young people, giving them opportunities, skill training that they need for the jobs of today and the future. And today we are celebrating an enormously important future for so many people, people who will have jobs here, people who will come here to work every day knowing that their lives have dignity and respect because they have good jobs. There are good jobs who, that will be at this site. Uh, the other uh, point that I want to emphasize is that uh, you know, there are a lot of folks who say there's no role for government today. Government is dysfunctional. And there are a lot of reasons to be skeptical and even cynical about government today. But sometimes it's a vital partner, as it was here. The grants that have come here most recently, the one that Senator Murphy and I announced, just a while ago for close to a million dollars in brownfields remediation. Enables sites to be reclaimed. Yes, Waterbury has a great manufacturing legacy. With that legacy comes sites like this one that bear 
the traces of contamination from manufacturing done in eras past when there was less knowledge about the impacts of chemicals and pollution and contaminants. King Industries should not bear the financial burden of cleaning up this site because of contamination done in the past. That's where government has played a role, enabling the investment, in fact, making the investment that is so critical for King Industries to go forward. And so I was very proud to announce that grant with Senator Murphy and uh, Elizabeth Esty, the congresswoman from this district, and to be here today because King Industries may seem like a small company, but it has a huge reach. As Robert mentioned, its specialty additives are found almost everywhere in the cars you drive, in the machinery that will help to build this site, in airplanes, in countless different methods of transportation. King Industries performs a vital service for this nation, and yet it is built on family, on trust, on closeness to community. And that kind of set of values are really what make it great. One last point, uh, Robert is a veteran. King Industries employs veterans. So important today as literally hundreds of thousands of men and women come back from the wars that they fought, come out of the service where they've sacrificed and need these kinds of opportunities. King Industries is there for our veterans. And so a special thanks to uh, Robert and Shenton, the King family, Richard King, uh, all of the great men and women that make King Industries such a unique and powerful contributor to Connecticut's economy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Blumenthal, for your, for your great points and, and kind words. Uh, I'd like to invite up uh, Ken Curran, Director of Outreach for U.S. Senator Chris Murphy. Good morning. I was first hired by Chris in 2008, and I was assigned Waterbury uh, by my boss. And everywhere I went, no matter what the organization or, or the group, they told me about Waterbury Industrial Commons. So I went back to the boss, and we talked about it and tried to figure out a way to get it done. And the Department of Defense came up. And uh, Mayor, you remember your meeting with the Kings very vividly, but Chris remembers that meeting with uh, Chairman Murth that uh, since passed away very vividly, uh, big oaks table and he sat across from him and explained that, you know, the nation really was on Waterbury's shoulders in World War I and II and left behind this contamination and really was inherent in the Department of Defense to, to make it good and, and Chairman Murtha took it all in and didn't show his cards one way or another and then he got the call about a week later from Chairman Murtha saying that he was going to give the $15 million uh, to the project. So this site is, is Chris's and he'll tell you his greatest accomplishment. Uh, and the thing that he's, he's most proud of. Uh, and further, to King Industries Manufacturing, when Chris first got elected to Congress, there was a debate in D.C. kind of almost on giving up on manufacturing, and maybe America could just be a service or a financial services industry. And Chris was part of a group uh, leading the cause that, no, we have to still make stuff here in this country, and, and how important it is in King Industries. Thank you for, for leading that cause here in state. And lastly, I've said this before, we were at a community meeting maybe a few months ago, and one of the activists got up, it was like one of those round table discussions, the activists got up from the back and said, you know, stop talking and do something. And I just can't say how proud we are to be here from Waterbury to have a mayor and administration that decided a while ago to stop talking and do things. And uh, here we are, the ground baking for King Industries, which is a huge sign of, of that progress. So on behalf of Senator Murphy, uh, thank you to King Industries and uh, thanks to the mayor uh, for getting this done. Thank you for your kind words. I'd like to invite up Commissioner Robert Klee, uh, Commissioner of Connecticut's Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Thank you. 
Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, it is really great to be here with you today in Waterbury as you take yet another step in the in the real transformation and economic revitalization of this uh, this city that's been so great to watch and see uh, from my vantage point at the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Uh, Waterbury has really been at the forefront in throughout Connecticut in the cleanup and reuse of contaminated lands. You are innovative, you are pushing the envelope here in, in all the right ways, and it's uh, your dedicated team here, Mayor, who has been doing amazing work all around the city. So congratulations to you, and congratulations to King Industries to being a part of this, uh, this real renaissance of Waterbury that we're so excited about. Um, Mayor, I'll also give a shout out to the other things we're working on with you the innovative things you're doing in the recycling and the waste sphere, the things you're doing on energy, uh, urban forestry, urban parks, outdoor recreation. Uh, it's been a real fun ride, and I, and I love whenever I get to come over to Waterbury and hear what's, what you got cooking next. So it's always uh, keeping me on my toes, and, and, and it's really exciting. Um, thanks also to the Waterbury Regional Chamber and the folks at, at the various state agencies, including my own. I have some of my deep staff here in, in the back say hi to them. Uh, they work hard each and every day to, to help move us, our agency, as fast as we possibly can to get projects like these done. Uh, Commissioner Smith and Deputy Commissioner Sullivan at DCD, a real partnership there that's been uh, flourishing the last four years uh, plus uh, under Governor Malloy. And thank you to our partners in the General Assembly. I, I see quite a few of the folks from the, the Waterbury delegation here today. Your ability to craft innovative, progressive brownfields policy at the General Assembly and then see it happen right here in Waterbury, that's been a fantastic thing and a fantastic partnership between my agency and the General Assembly. So I wanted to thank you all for all the hard work you guys do up in Hartford all the time. Um, brownfields are, are really, they're, they're real estate transactions, but with the added complexity, the environmental component, that's really where you need the patience, the optimism, and the ability to work with partners to get it done. And that's really the keys to success of brownfield development, because frankly, it's a hell of a lot easier to go to a greenfield and, and, and do something like this. But that's contrary to the other parts of my agency's mission, to preserve open space, to preserve our natural resources. So we view brownfields redevelopment as actually reducing pressure on those green spaces and open spaces. And that's such a critical part of our broader agency mission, and it's done here in Waterbury, where you get sites that have the infrastructure already built. They have the electric infrastructure. They have gas. They have water. These are the sites that we're really encouraging folks to, to locate and put less pressure on Connecticut's uh, amazing open space. Thank you to King Industries for the jobs, and thank you also for the link to education. That's also part of my mission at Energy Environmental Protection, is to really encourage our next generation of environmental leaders and uh, getting people excited about the things that we do. So education is, is such a, a key component. <laughs> Connecticut truly does get that Brownfield's remediation is so important to improve the environment, reduce public health risks, and to make economic growth in an environmentally sound manner and really make the best use of our lands and resources. And Governor Malloy has really been a leader here in, in really investing in our, our brownfields and in redevelopment. Since 2012, we've provided over close to $140 million in grants for over 100 projects statewide, contam redeveloping contaminated sites across, across the state. And for every dollar invested by the state, over $4.50 are invested by non-state partners. So that's really leveraging our state resources to induce private capital flows, which is exciting. We've been focused on improving our processes to make our agency move faster, to cut down the paperwork, to cut down the bureaucracy, and really make these things happen in a timely manner. So um, again, congratulations, Mayor O'Leary, to the city of Waterbury, to King Industries, um, who've been really a part of making this uh, such a great success. I look forward to, to coming back here and, and visiting uh, this real industrial ecosystem that's developed in this, uh, in this part of Waterbury. So thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Robert, for your kind words, and, and I agree. Come back in three to five years, and uh, I think you'll see a state-of-the-art manufacturing facility that'll be a, a bragging point for the city of, of Waterbury. Uh, next, I'd like to call up Tim Sullivan, Deputy Commissioner of the State Department of Economic and Community Development. Good morning. It's, uh, it's great to be here on behalf of Governor Malloy and my boss, Commissioner uh, DECD Commissioner Catherine Smith. It's great to be in Waterbury and see another milestone of all the progress that's happening in this, in this great city. 
Uh, I want to start off by thanking and congratulating Robert and the, and the team at King. Uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for investing in Connecticut. Thanks for investing in, in Waterbury. I would have liked to have thought we had more going for it than your dad doesn't like to fly, but I will take it. <laughs> uh, it's great to see. Um, it's great to see what's going to happen here as, as part of the arsenal of democracy gets refired and, and, and put back to, to productive to productive use. Um, it's great to be uh, with Mayor O'Leary and his great team. Thanks and congratulations to them as well. This couldn't have happened without their leadership and their um, energy and drive and dedication, not only at this site, but at sites all throughout the city and in projects that uh, we're proud to play a small part in um, uh, in providing some funding and, and assistance. Um, it really does, This is a great example, I think, not only of, uh, of bringing back a manufacturing site and putting manufacturing back in a brownfield, back on a brownfield, um, but also of great partnership between the federal government, state government, and city government, uh, which this, that's really how these projects, projects that are this complex, that require this kind of coordination, really require strong partnership. And so it's been a great example of, um, of the partnership between the federal government, the state government, and, and the city government. And it's also, you know, Commissioner Klee um, talked about the great partnership that uh, our agency and his agency have together. And that's driven in large part because we've been given the resources and the tools by, by the governor and the, the assembly and the great uh, leadership provided by the Waterbury delegation and uh, Representative Berger and Senator Hartley and so many others um, to provide the funding and the tools uh, and the programs to, to get these sites back, uh, back into productive use. So it's great to be here to celebrate yet another milestone in Waterbury. We'll look forward to coming back for the uh, ribbon cutting and opening day and um, we'll hope to see everyone soon. Congratulations and thanks to everyone who made this possible. Okay, we're getting close. <laughs> uh, before we begin the actual shovel ceremony, I wanted to speak to everybody just about a, a few key people at King Industries that I felt were representative uh, of King Industries in general. And there's just, I can't, I can go on and on and on about the great people at King Industries. Uh, the first of which is my father. Uh, he wasn't able to be here today, but he's just been a great leader, a great example. Uh, of what a true uh, president and CEO of, of a manufacturing company should be. Uh, he graduated from Norwich University and prepared for his chemical engineer and chemical manufacturing with a political science degree. Uh, so he was really self-taught. He, he was a hard worker, applied himself, and this was before the age of the internet. So you can imagine it was a hands-on type of learning, uh, get it done attitude, do it safely, and teach other people around you. He couldn't do it alone. So he did a great job of, of teaching others around him. Uh, and, and that's what I think real leadership is, bringing other people up around you. Uh, and he's done just a fantastic job. Uh, the second individual I'd like to, uh, to recognize here today, and he'll be up here at the shovel ceremony, is Juan Flores. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to think Juan lived at the plant. Uh, when I would go there with my father as a kid, he would be there. When my father would need to know what was going on, he would call Juan. Uh, it was just a pretty incredible guy. He used to actually drive the lunch truck into King Industries. How many years ago, Juan? 42 years ago. The foreman at the time, it was a World War II vet and mortar uh, gunner on a uh, uh, gunnery barge off the coast of, uh, in, the, in the Pacific area of World War II, uh, took, hold, took hold of Juan. Uh, he was, his name was Larry Balsiers, and although he passed away a few years ago, he was a great mentor to Juan. And again, good leaders at King Industries teach others around them, and, and Juan's a prime example of that. Day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, Juan would show up early, stay late, prepare for jobs that were coming up. He, he, he's the type of guy that I, in the Army I would call the crusty old sergeant major who could, who could almost tell the future of what things were going to happen before they happened. And you'd be, you'd be surprised when Juan would say, watch this. You were, you were just amazed at what would happen. Uh, Juan, thank you for your service to King Industries. We, we appreciate you, and uh, you're a great example. And for me, it's just ideal to have the employees at King Industries be exposed to, to leadership like, like Juan. Thank you. Forgive me, I don't get to brag much about my employees, especially in public, so I, I have one more person to brag about. Uh, his name is, is Abby Karam. Uh, Abby is just the epitome of the American story. Uh, he grew up in Lebanon, knew that he needed to get a good education, 
and he saw the opportunity in America. So he, he took a chance, came to America, applied to Northeastern University, did a great job there and really applied himself, and not only just in, in uh, academics, but also working on the side, working third shift to get money to know that he would better himself. He ended up working for an engineering firm up in Boston. What was the name of the firm, Abby? Artisan Industries, which, which we sometimes use today. And he came to King Industries as, as a consultant, uh, and I think hired on as an, an intern, and then as a chemical engineer, and just did a great job at everything he did, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Every time he took on a challenge, he did a great job and repeated it. And uh, today we're thankful to have Abby as our executive vice president. Uh, he's led us through many difficult times and good times throughout the company, uh, one of which was the you know, economic downturn. Abby was a big part in, in making sure that King Industries made it through that, and, and we did, and we're better for that. And uh, again, I'm really lucky to have people like Abby, Juan, my father, around for, for the coworkers at King Industries to be exposed to. It's just a, a phenomenal thing. So thank you so much for coming out here today. I'll explain how the shovel ceremony is going to go. We're going to do three groups. The first group is kind of going to be like the official party. And what I'm going to do is call them up. And if you fall in on your shovels from your right to left, and there's going to be names behind there, so you'll be able to see where you go. I'll call you up, and uh, I'll fall in, in in my space, and then we'll give a three count, and uh, then we'll we'll take our pictures. Sound good? Okay. Also, we're going to don some hard hats, and there's a brown box over there, from what I'm told, and it apparently has some uh, gold. Well, they're plastic. Uh, gold hard hats from ONG, and uh, if we can wear those for the photo op, that'd be great. The second group, I'm not going to call up, but I'd like to have uh, the second site design team. Y you know who you are. I'd like to have Gail and, and Don McPartland, if, Gail McTaggart and Don McPartland, if they're here as well, to come on up, uh, as well as the second site design team to come up for a picture. The last group, anybody who works at King Industries, come on up here, get a photo op. Um, a board, board of Aldermen, too, I know you had a heavy hand in this as well, and I'd like to recognize you, too. So. Feel free to jump in to get a picture. Uh, and again, thanks for coming here for such a great event. I, I really appreciate it. And come back in three years and check out our progress. <laughs> Could I please have Joe McGraw, Economic Development Coordinator, please come on up. Greg Oneglia, Vice Chairman, ONG Industries. Lynn Ward, President, Waterbury Chamber of Commerce. The Honorable Mayor Neil O'Leary. Juan Flores, King Industries Plant Supervisor. Juan, leave a spot for me, I'm next to you. <laughs> Shetton King, my twin brother and Director of Marketing at King Industries. Abby Karam, Executive Vice President, King Industries. U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Ken Curran, Director of Outreach for U.S. Senator Chris Murphy. Robert Klee, Commissioner, Connecticut DEEP. And Tim Sullivan, Commissioner of the Department of Economic and Community Development. Thank you so much for coming out today. And I, like I said before, I won't be calling up uh, the other groups, but thank you so much again for coming out here today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.
Company, uh, Kati Company from Norwalk has built uh, King Industries buildings for the last past 40 some odd years. I've been personally involved with every project uh, that King has done down in the Norwalk area. And we've been brought up here by Mr. King and ONG to assist in uh, the overall uh, clearing of the site, preparing it for the new structures. What we're doing is we're uh, investigating different areas of the underground and identifying existing foundations from the World War II, World War I buildings, uh, breaking them up and removing them. One of the finest companies you'd ever want to meet. The family is family, and we consider our, our Conti family part of theirs. We've grown up with them, we've grown up with, I've seen the sons grow up. I was with Mr. King for the past 40 some odd years when we both got out of the service, we got to know each other, and we've been in charge of all their construction since then. Uh, can't say enough about the entire organization. They are the best. 
For us, I know Waterbury's done a lot of hard work on getting, I believe it was a Tiger Grant application uh, to, to start this greenway. I believe they're starting in the south and then coming up north. Um, and the city of Waterbury approached us to see if we'd be amicable to uh, having it on the uh, western edge of our property, uh, directly adjacent to the river. And uh, they specifically wanted to make use of the uh, old steel bridge back there. We thought it was a great way for uh, the residents to enjoy the Naugatuck River and uh, the fact that it's coming back and you see a lot of birds and I, I know a lot of people fish on there and um, you know for us we want to continue to be good environmental stewards and then also allow uh, people to enjoy the Naugatuck River and then you know maybe be able to see what a, a state-of-the-art uh, manufacturing facility looks like and then also see what a state-of-the-art manufacturing uh, park looks like for Connecticut. So I, I definitely think it would be great for Waterbury to have that here.